Hi everyone, thanks for checking out another InfoSec Hub video. Today we're going to talk about the Exchange Online Protection Tool. And it's a tool that comes with Office 365. So it is usually already in place with a lot of companies that work cloud-based. Why is this tool important? Because most of the viruses, most of the malware, spyware, and all those nasty things from the internet uh, enter your corporate network by email for two to three decades long already the email is a to-go place for uh, all these uh, threat actors coming from the internet so let's dive right into it and email has been around since the 90s it's uh, used heavily nowadays it's in my opinion used a little bit too much for every notification, every update, every deletion, whatever kind of action you have in a system and you're subscribed to it, you will get a notification by email. So, yeah, it's a little bit over the top, more than, I don't know, millions and millions of emails are sent every day. That's the basis. Email. We talk about MX records. An MX record is... A record that specifies the mail server that is responsible for accepting email messages on behalf of the domain name. So if you have a company, you have your own name at the domain name. Let's say oaktree at google.com. Oaktree is my username. Google is the domain name. So when you use Gmail, you use their MX uh, server, the records for the mail server the mail server that is responsible for accepting the email message, accepting. So there is sort of a gateway there. Keep that in mind. This should give you more information. So you have the internet here, you have millions of clients and you send an email over the internet to a mail server. Then the email is routed to the data center based on the MX record solution. So it, the record says it's allowed or it's not allowed. And this decision making is here implemented in exchange online protection. So there are various things that this uh, tool can do. It can either place um, emails in quarantine. So then as a... Um, functional application manager or a manager that is responsible for um, email uh, or the exchange server in general can see okay what is placed in quarantine was this the right decision if it's the right decision then we delete it if it was not the right decision we can still forward it to the recipient that is waiting for this email so it will do some connection filtering. Where is this coming from? Is this coming from Ukraine? Is it coming from North Korea? Is it coming from America? Um, uh, is it a legit domain name? Or is it a domain name that is already flagged and tagged by uh, hundreds of thousands of other people that this domain name is responsible for sending spam? Every time that you send no, that you receive an email and you say, okay, this is spam or this is phishing because you have those buttons inside of Outlook. You're feeding the beast and the, the beast, this, in this case, Microsoft learns that the sender is not kosher. It's not legit. So you learn, uh, you, you teach them, I should say, uh, what, is, what, is, what is good and what is not good. It can also help you with anti-malware. So um, certain email uh, addresses, certain links that are used in these email messages that point to either a JavaScript or, uh, you know, whatever it is that loads mal malware onto your system, there always is a script involved or there's a, there's a web page involved that need to be loaded into your system and then in the background already start executing certain um, processes. That's usually how it starts and there are characteristics involved in this and EUP knows about this. So it can spot the characteristics. If you say that the perpetrator wear a black hoodie and um, 
has bright yellow shoes on, for instance, then it knows to a certain degree what to trust and what not to trust. And then the this this program can still decide to put it in quarantine, and then a human can see and verify the message in a in a um, how you say this in a sandbox environment and, and and see what it is. But the beautiful thing about the internet, when you see a link. You can always see what link is behind it and you can see if it points to the right domain what kind of url it is what kind of uh, top level domain it is is it from the us is it from europe is it you know and you you can basically assess if this is legit or not um you also have certain policies so for instance let's say you have a policy that um you only allow emails coming from the same country that you reside in because your country is only there it only has customers clients in that own uh, uh, in that uh, country for instance and when you have a customer or an email coming out from abroad i'm not uh, delivering my services there so by default i'm going to block it that's a certain mail policy and with that already you can say it's either a junk mail or you can put it in quarantine so later on you can still see if it's legit or not and then based on your personal preference you can update the policy delete the policy or add another policy. Then we have something that's called con content filtering. So you have uh, the um, the beginning, you have the base of the email, you have the the uh, the last couple of lines of the email where you have a um, uh, name of the guy or girl or company, and all of this information can be traced back to this whole list. A block list is nothing more than a very comprehensive, very long list that's updated on a 24-hour basis, basically, and then pushed to all the subscribers. We uh, we have something that's an open source spam list called Spam House. I can make another video about that. Uh, maybe the next video I'll make about this is going to be about Spam House. And this also is an open source list of all bad domains, domain names, um, individual email addresses, that can all be linked to spamming. And mind you, those kind of email addresses might live for one or two hours on the internet and then already is able to send thousands and thousands of emails. Uh, and by the time you go check upon that domain or the account, it, it doesn't exist no more. But the link that they published in that email maybe is valid for a week and then they take that offline and they get their money and they, the, the spam has been um, finished and Maybe the hacker or attacker has made some money or maybe he didn't. So it's all uh, cat and mouse basically on the internet. So this Exchange Online Protection EOP is part of the Exchange Outlook service that comes with Office 365. You can have email security gateways like Barracuda in place as well or other products that can do the same thing, but if you're using the cloud anyway, you're using Exchange, you can, you might as well use this because it's very effective. It's um, based on customer feedback. That's what it says here. So false uh, positives and false negatives, they still uh, happen, of course. But every time you click the button in the email to say, okay, this is spam, this is phishing, that recipient and the sender will be, um, will be stored in this list. So every time you click and interact with it, you will give this information to Microsoft to put up their defenses. Basically, you teach them. So this is very nice uh, to have because still, when you talk about data breaches or malware, ransomware attacks, it still most of the time comes from clicking on, a, on an email link. We have a company here in the Netherlands that sells electronics. It's a very big company. They were hacked, I think, a year ago, and it took attackers about eight months to lock down everything because they, first of all, one employee clicked the link, then they had access to a server and they jumped from one server to another before they had the root access. They had um, access to the uh, Active Directory, for instance, and they were able to take control of the whole network without leaving any traces without anybody knowing and as soon as they had full control of the network then they placed ransomware and then they asked for, for a lot of money but the attackers and it was described 
uh, in an article that I wrote that it took them from the moment that the, the employee clicked the link until the full-blown ransom attack happened was eight months in between. And there's also techniques to spot them, but if you're really good and you know how to hide your traces, then it is possible to stay inside the system for that long. And you can, first of all, you do reconnaissance and you, you see what's happening around the network and you spot certain trends and you know around 3 a.m. in the morning, no one is online, so I can have a couple of hours to snoop around. But with everything, there's always a technical solution for everything, logging or um, just regular checks. Internal audit is one thing, uh, logging is another one. Um, those kind of things I already talked about on my channel as well, but it's it's all possible. So this is in the basis what Exchange Online Protection is all about. Um, and the email is routed to the data center and there it's been analyzed. It's been analyzed for the links, the sender, the recipient, all that stuff. And then he will place it in quarantine. He will put it in junk mail and then still someone with the right privileges has access to that email box and see if that was correct or not and then by doing so uh, making the human decision um, based on train eyes and experience you can still make sure that you learn let microsoft know okay but this was really spam and this wasn't and by that you sent this all back to microsoft and they hopefully and they do make their service better over time so thanks for watching another one I appreciate this. Um, leave a comment if you want and uh, hope to catch you in the next one.